Hey everyone, this is your girl Ro, the Media Phoenix with Caribbean Life TV, and we are here at Georgia Supreme Cricket League opener, season opener, and I'm here with the president of the league and the PR person for the league, imp very important people. I was so very important people. Can you introduce yourselves to everyone Hello, for me, sir? William Skinner, I'm the president of the Georgia Supreme Cricket League. Thank Hello, you. Mr. Skinner, how are you, and you, sir? I'm Conrad Rogers, and I'm the public relations officer. You're very, you're, yes, you're very busy. You, we, we, it, it took us a while to get to you than to get you over here. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to start the league and, and what makes this league important to you. Well, for me, it's really to keep the Caribbean culture alive and to make sure um, cricket is growing and taking off in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And um, I just believe that our culture needs to be well represented. And in, if you are not representing cricket, you're not representing Caribbean culture because that, that holds us together, as you quite well know. Wow. So you do believe that if you if you don't represent cricket, you don't represent the Caribbean culture. So what if you represent soccer? You're still not representing the full the full diaspora no, of the culture. You could recognize any game and be in any game, but we know that cricket is the game that we have. <laughs> okay, I, I, I see I see where your your passion lies. I see where your passion lies, sir. Now you are the PR person for this amazing event. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. So, so tell us a little bit about what went into it, all the sweat and tears that you had to put into this. Because you're smiling. <laughs> well, um, you see me, but it's actually a committee yes. that uh, organizes the season opener. Mm -hmm. and this is our second year of doing it at, I guess, at this level because right. this is my second year as a public relations officer. Right, right. Um, we have met um, once a week now for about a month. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of learn from what we did last year. Right, right. Um, and how long does it take? Because you're saying it met for, a, but how long, from beginning to end, how long did it take to plan the event? Well, we met for a month, once a week for a month, mm -hmm. for about an um, hour, hour and a half. Um, you know, plus uh, in our outside of those meetings, preparation, Your personal meetings, conversation. Yeah, making the con um, the contacts, for mm -hmm. example, reaching out to mm -hmm. Caribbean Life TV. Right. So what would you want people to gain from this? When, when, when everyone leaves here today, what would be the one thing, the one you know, piece that you want everyone to say, okay, this is what we need to take, this is what we need to do going forward as a community, as a community for the Cricket League? Yeah, we need to get our kids and our grandkids, um, both boys and girls, more involved in the sport. Uh, we know that the Caribbean community, we live in, in a host country. Yes. And uh, we know here we have soccer, we have American-style football, golf, so many games that we are competing with, basketball, tennis, and so on. So we just want them to know that we are trying our best to make sure that uh, when cricket gets to a certain level in America, that the Caribbean community will be well represented. That's the message that we want them to take away, that we are trying hard to keep this um, sport um, in the forefront here in Georgia, and indeed the United States of America. Because yeah, we did. I spoke with several people today in the Keys mainstream. Did you play soccer? I mean, did you play um, cricket, sir? Yes, I did. So tell me now, when you see this uh, and, and being here in the States and knowing that cricket is not mainstream, so you, you're here in a country that doesn't recognize this sport as much, what is it going to take? We, we have the events, we have the league, but what else is it going to take to take this to another level? Well, certainly uh, doing things like yes, this, yes. making sure we have media present mm -hmm. um, in our functions, right, that's right. going to help, that's going to get the word out right. to other people. But more importantly, we need to reach out to our young people. We need to get cricket in the schools. Yes. We need to let the, the young kids and their parents know mm -hmm. that cricket is here mm -hmm. and is here to stay. Uh, cricket is the fastest growing sport in the world and That's one of nice. the fastest growing sports in America. That's nice. It's the second most popular sport in the world. It is the... And see, people would not believe that. I don't think anyone believed that cricket is the second most popular sport in the world. When you're listening, you know, but the thing is, you're talking about the entire world, not just the United States of America. We happen to be in the United States, but you're talking about a whole different world that appreciates different cultures and different sports. Yeah, that is that is true. I, I will, And I've shared this with a couple of people. I've said um, the World Cup in 2016. Yes, sir. The second most popular viewership. Mm. It's cricket. Cricket nice. was in America. Nice. Second only to India. See, you learned something today. You learned something on Caribbean Life TV. And so, and that's because there are cricket nations. There are lots of people here from the world dominant uh, cricket nations the Indians, the Pakistanis, right, right, right. the West Indians, right, of course, right, right. Uh, the British, the South Africans, the New Zealanders. Um, they're all here. America is a melting pot. Right. And so, uh, when I first started that, I was a little surprised, but when I studied it, it made sense. That's good.
Okay. That, so when we talk about, because we're talking about getting into the, into the schools, and we've talked about it all day. You know, we had different various interviews with several people. Everyone speaks about getting it into the schools, getting cricket into the schools. But the point is how. So the question is how do we get them into the schools? Well, we did start uh, a program last year and with one primary school, and we were in another primary school in the city. We went there two years in a row. But, you know, we are in America, there are a lot of rules and regulations when you're dealing with very young children. So we have to develop a program that will meet the standards of safety and the legal requirements in America. It's not like back home that anybody yeah. could stop and see a yeah. piece of land and start to play, somebody gets hit and probably um, grows up with one eye or something. <laughs> that, that is before anybody paying anything. One yeah. yeah. So therefore litigation and of course competing as always with the sports that are already there that are American sports and we have to be always conscious that we are in a um, host country yeah. and we have to respect the rules and regulations governing their sports. Yeah. So we're going to work with that. The executive is going to work very hard to make sure maybe in another two or three years we have all the um, ducks line up. So it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's not, nothing's going to happen tomorrow. And you said a couple of two or three years. Do you think we have the foundation set? Do you think we have the knowledge and the background that we need to teach our youth and to bring it into school and to start the workshops and programs that we need to, to, to take cricket to mainstream? Yeah, I certainly do. I'll, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Standing right across from us, mm -hmm. uh, who's the match referee for this game, mm -hmm. is um, none other than Clayton yeah. Lambert who is a former West Indian uh, opening batsman, a highly respected and very knowledgeable player of the game, and he's also a certified coach, right? And so with him and others like him, we have several people in our league that have represented um, their countries at, at a high level. You know, we have a lot of Jamaicans in the league. We have a lot of other um, uh, West Indian countries represented. Many of the players have represented... Um, their country at at either the under-19 mm -hmm. level or uh, at the senior level. Okay. So the skill set is here. Right. It's really, as, as Skinner said, it's really um, trying to develop a program that will meet the requirements of the school systems and then making that presentation to them, right? So what do you need from the community? What do you need from us? What do you need us to do to help you get into the schools and do what needs to be done to get these programs to fruition? First, we need to, like I said earlier, we need to get children and your grandchildren, your boys and girls, granddaughters and grandsons, um, nephews and nieces. Because um, as cricket takes off, they're putting a lot of emphasis on women's cricket mm -hmm. and youth cricket. Right, right. So therefore, we are, we are going to, we have a program with Positive Cricket Force already. Yes, yes, I going, spoke with them. Yeah. We're going to try to grow that maybe to 30 or 40 within a nice. year or so. Okay. And we will continue to work hard. This is very hard work. Uh, it looks like fun to people. but well, Building a village does take hard work. You know? yeah, so this is very hard work, and we are very optimistic. Um, I could say right now we have a very, very good executive working, and um, we, we are going to continue to push. It's all about pushing and, and realizing where we are. You know, I always tell people when you get off the plane in America or England or Canada, make the mental adjustment. You know, you could still eat your cuckoo, you could yeah. still have your you could still have your acne and salt fish, right. but um, remember where you are, your Kalaloon thing, that's for home. But yes. you have to recognize and respect yeah. the fact that you are in a host country. Yes, we are very um, I've had some preliminary discussions with um, governmental people and I'm very optimistic that they're going to embrace us more and that we are going to get cricket exactly where it needs. This is exciting. This is exciting. This is exciting. So if anyone wanted to participate in the league, how would they get in contact with you guys? Well, they can contact any member of the executive. They can contact me. I'm the public relations officer. I give up my phone number, 404-966-2342. We, we have a website, uh, www w.gascl.org. That's our website. We're also on Facebook. And um, our contact information for all the league's executives are on our website as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your effort. Thank you for your work and your dedication. Um, we hope that, you know, whatever you need from our family, that we are here for you whenever you need us. Um, it's, this is amazing. This is amazing. So we, we look forward to seeing, you know, cricket go mainstream. We look forward to seeing a national league like soccer, you know, we're looking forward to celebrating an Atlanta league and a, and a Florida league or a Miami and Orlando in the next years, in the next yeah, years. I just want to say as president of the league um, to Lawrence and his wonderful crew that we have, um, we consider him a partner in this and we are willing to work with Caribbean life in any area. Um, I myself am very impressed 
with the effort that Lawrence and his team is making. And I want you all to know that we consider you all to be partners and that we will work with you. And we wish you all the best too and keep on pushing on because in a way you're doing the same thing yes, we that are. we're doing. You're trying to break into mainstream media. We're trying to break into mainstream sports. So it's the same thing, six and a half a dozen. Yes, we're all that's the this, same thing. We're all in this together. Yes, our goal is our goal is, is, is to create a legacy for our youth, thank you know, you. And, and, and that's what we're doing with everyone that we partner with. So we thank you. And again, if anything, you, if you ever need anything from Caribbean Life TV, Lawrence, and the entire family, shout out to Lawrence Prescott, our, 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 our founder and organizer. Anything you need from us, please, you know, you know where he is. You know how to get in contact with him. But this is your girl, Rose Solo, the Phoenix here with Caribbean Live TV. We are at the Georgia Supreme Cricket League um, season opener, and I'm here with the president and the PR person. So if you need to do anything, what you need to do is focus on the league. And our goal is to get cricket into the schools, and that's just more than just elementary and middle school. We're talking about high school. We're talking about offering scholarships at universities and colleges. We're talking about programs and recreational sport, and now going professional and national leagues. That's our goal. That's the, the goal of the Caribbean. Caribbean diaspora. So thank you so much for, for listening to Caribbean Live TV. This is your girl Rosola the Phoenix and we are out.